Hello everybody, and welcome to my government-mandated 200k subscriber milestone Q&A video. Now you might be asking why I decided to upload this video on a channel with uh, not 200,000 subscribers, uh, but honestly, that's a question I should be asking you. But for real, uh, it's just because I want to keep the main channel for exclusively high-quality content, and the second channel is going to be for more, like, personal content almost, and also just a place where I can make videos without any of the high standards that I usually have. Like this video, for example, is going to be uh, pretty scuffed and uh, not well edited, but you know, it is what it is. But I know you guys don't care about that because it wasn't one of the hundreds of questions that I got on the Q&A community post, so let's quit dilly-dallying and start already. Actually, uh, two more dilly-dallies. Uh, one, if you asked a question and you don't see it in this video, it's because you were too slow, idiot. And two, a bunch of the questions that I got were also packaged with some really kind words, and I want to make it clear that I'm not ignoring them throughout the course of this video, because it might seem like it. Seriously, thank you all for being so nice all of the time. It, it really does make me happy. Okay, now it's answer time. So I split up all the questions I got into a couple categories to make this video a little bit more watchable. Go ahead and skip to whatever questions you think you'll be the most interested in. We're starting off with challenge and video related questions, because those were by far the most popular. Starting off with the most common question, what were my favorite challenges slash videos? And a couple of people even wanted to know my least favorite. I'll give a top three for favorites, uh, Shovel Knight, Brawl, and Hollow Knight, in that order. These challenges were all just so fun, and not only were they successful, but they were also interesting, like all throughout. Shovel Knight and Hollow Knight in particular were both challenges that I actually did on my own time before I made challenge content, uh, because it's just something that I enjoy doing. All three of these embody exactly what I want out of the challenges, which is just a way to play the game that forces you to learn all the mechanics and apply them in weird spots, and it just so happened to work out perfectly in these three games in particular. And the more I like the challenge, the more motivated I'm going to be to make a good video out of it, uh, so these are also my favorite videos of mine. That being said, my least favorite challenge that I've done, by far, is every Kirby game jump list. This was an idea that I had that I thought was funny, but I really should have stopped to think of whether or not it was an actually good idea, because many of the games were just not fun and not interesting. While making it, I realized that Kirby's Adventure actually did have a really cool jump list challenge, and I considered scrapping the entire idea in just making a video on that one uh, that went more in depth on the glitches and routing, and in a perfect world I would have done that, but instead we have uh, that nonsense which is just kind of below my own standards, unfortunately. Oh man, look out, we got more challenge stats. My easiest challenge was probably Luigi's Mansion without the flashlight. It wasn't really even a challenge, it was mostly just an excuse to make a video about its out-of-bounds glitch, because it's one of my favorite video game tricks of all time. For the record, I think Luigi's Mansion is one of my personal favorite videos of mine. I think its script is really well written. Uh, but yeah, the challenge itself took like three hours or something. On the flip side, my hardest challenge was definitely Brawl No Moving. Uh, and it was also my longest, if you don't count every Kirby game combined, which does doesn't really make sense to do. Brawl was either like mind-numbingly slow and boring, or it was insanely difficult. Like I said, it was one of my favorite challenges because I had to come up with new tricks all the time, uh, but that also contributed to being super hard and taking forever. Brawl took about 30 hours to beat, I think, uh, probably around eight hours to script, and then like a full-time week or two of editing. Although I did edit it faster than most of my other videos, there weren't too many like crazy complex parts. A few people also asked uh, where I get video ideas, how I keep the motivation to make videos, and a couple of other questions regarding the video making process in general, so I can talk about that a bit. Coming up with ideas is really abstract, and I don't have like a process or anything, it just sort of happens. Occasionally, I'll think of like a challenge concept first. Like for example, with Plants for Zombies Blindfolded, I just wanted to do a blindfolded challenge, because I think blindfolded challenges are cool, but I wanted to think of a game where it wasn't necessarily just memorizing all the correct inputs to beat the game, uh, and instead maybe involved more randomness, more strategy, and Plants for Zombies sort of fit the bill. Usually though, I start with a game that I just really like and want to make a video about, and then try and build a challenge around it. Generally, this involves doing a ton of research, you know, looking up speedruns, tasses, looking up maybe other challenges of this game, just to figure out what's possible in it. And then once I've, you know, determined, okay, there's enough, like, interesting stuff to talk about, even in regard to this game, how can I build a challenge that uses and applies all of these tricks? So for example, for my Meat Boy video, I just decided Super Meat Boy is a game that I wanted to make a video about. It's one of my favorite games. I looked up speedruns on Super Meat Boy and I found, you know, all of the insane <laughs> glitches that you can do in that game. And I decided, oh yeah, this is really interesting. This is stuff I wanna talk about. So then in essence, coming up with a challenge for Super Meat Boy is almost just coming up with an excuse to talk about these things. Why would I ever need to use the time stop glitch? Why would I ever need to use 
auto jump, and no jumping just worked. So then, I record myself doing the challenge, I write a script, read the script while recording, uh, and then edit it all together. Scripting and editing is about 80% of the process, uh, but it usually isn't too bad, especially if the challenge is really interesting to me. But voiceovers are easily the hardest part to force myself to do, because it involves no creative input, because the script is already done. It also hurts my throat, because my videos are long. I generally work on around two or three videos simultaneously, just in case I have a hard time uh, starting or continuing one of the steps for a particular challenge. That's just a motivation thing. A decent number of people also asked about scrapped challenges, and there are plenty of that I can immediately think of. One of them is Paper Mario, either the first or the second without using Mario. This is an idea that's just been done to death, and I initially thought that I could differentiate myself from the multiple other people who have done it by doing more glitches and maybe banning items, but I really didn't feel good about it. Another was Super Metroid, while only using ball form. This is a challenge that I was willing to make the stupidest rules for because I loved the idea so much and I love Super Metroid so much, uh, but it turns out you just can't deal damage to bosses as a ball, which was the last straw for me. It's so sad. I was also going to make a Squeak Squad no B button challenge after making the task, which is actually a super cool challenge outside of one section that I couldn't figure out. So I actually, I put it on the back burner while I made Shovel Knight just in case I eventually got any better ideas for that section and I just never came back to it. I don't think it's possible. Amori is a game that I kind of became obsessed with after playing it for a while uh, and I wanted to do a challenge for it, but the best one I could think of was Amori only with minimum tags and I was gonna call it the No Friends Challenge. The issue with this one is that I could not at all find a way to differentiate the challenge from a speedrun and it just felt kind of weird to do a bad speedrun and call it a challenge. People have also already done Amori only, so minimum tags was the only thing I would be adding, and it just didn't feel like enough. And finally, the holy grail of scrapped challenge videos on the sample chample is SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom rehydrated without jumping. This challenge is so freaking cool, and I recorded the entire thing, wrote the entire script, and started editing it. And keep in mind, this was before I released the task or made videos in any capacity. I was just inspired by this challenge for some reason to make a video about it. But unfortunately, another much bigger YouTuber beat me to it, uh, and it completely sapped all my motivation. They even used a wrong warp to just skip to the end, which I didn't do in my challenge, so I had extra things to talk about. I was just so bummed out that I never finished it. I have, however, repurposed a bunch of the jokes that I wrote into the original script, uh, so it's kind of living through my current videos in that way, which is kind of funny. A couple people asked what games I want to make a video about, but can't find a good challenge for. I already mentioned Super Metroid. I love that game, and I I wish I could come up with something original for it, but it's really kind of a solved game. I was thinking of just doing reverse boss order, which is already a well-known challenge in that game, but it doesn't have a sort of uh, in-depth explanation of how it's possible in the style of my videos, but I feel like people wouldn't like it if I just made a video about a challenge that I didn't come up with. Pizza Tower is another game that I would absolutely adore making a video for if a good challenge existed. I tried deleting every button, I tried no collectibles, I tried a pacifist run, uh, none of them were possible or really even had any interesting strats though. The only challenge that I think might be good would be P-ranking every stage with as small of a combo as possible, but that's kind of a tough sell and it's also insanely hard. A couple people asked about challenges that I will never do, uh, and since I just recently released my blindfolded Plants for Zombies video, I figured it's a good time to say that I will never play Plants for Zombies 2 blindfolded. That game is like 20 times longer, you can't use a controller, and every other level is a gimmick level, which is not friendly. Also, no cup locks. Sorry, Chicken Ninja. On that subject, we have a question from Eric here, who asks about my standards for the types of challenges that I do. I know only one person asked, but this is a question that I really, really like. The way I see it, there are two types of challenges, game-focused and challenge-focused, and I way prefer the former. Challenge-focused is like Mario No Coins or Mega Man Hitless. It's only about the level-to-level -level obstacles for the challenge specifically. Game-focused challenges, on the other hand, are like the A-button challenge in Mario 64. Everyone who works on that challenge is so focused focused on finding out everything possible about the game that you can sometimes forget that they're even doing a challenge. And that's sort of what I want my videos to be like, which is why, for example, uh, when I wanted to do a blindfolded challenge, I didn't want to do a game where the entire point was just memorizing the exact inputs I needed to beat it. Uh, but I instead wanted a game where you actually had to apply knowledge of the game and its mechanics in order to beat it without seeing. Again, kind of related, what other challenge videos or challenge video YouTubers uh, am I into? Do I personally enjoy? I don't watch too many, but I will spitfire a few. Mario 64, A Button Challenge, 
challenge, the OG, it's so good. Argon Matrix has a skillless Stardew Valley run, which is a big comfort video of mine. I really liked Challenger Andy's no jumping runs of the Smash Bros games, they inspired my Brawl video. I am not a Five Nights fan, but Chicken Ninja's Five Nights videos are actually really, really interesting. It's cool to learn about the game in that way. This is kind of an oddball choice, but Simple Flips, one of my favorite YouTubers, has a series called Walkies, which is absolutely incredible. And my guy Barely Alec has easily the coolest plans for a zombies challenge, all to himself, like it's kind of rude that he's just hoarding it. There are definitely a bunch of others. There are so many good challenge content creators out there. There are even just people who are content creators who decide to make challenge content that's really, really good. So yeah, those are just the people that I immediately can think of. It's a little bit of recency bias, but there you go. Hey, a bunch of people also asked about tassing, which is the, the other thing that I do on this channel. Technically. The thing is, I'll only ever finish a project as huge as a TAS if I'm really passionate about it. Superstar Ultra was just a perfect game to TAS. I was so lucky that no one else had done the full game, uh, and Squeak Squad was such a fun run to route especially since big stars were sort of my discovery. This means that I can't promise I'll make another task, uh, especially anytime soon. I heavily considered Return to Dreamland, but that game just doesn't have as much tech or ability diversity as I initially wanted it to, and I also considered Epic Yarn, but tasking co-op gameplay is really, really time consuming. I might upload what I have so far of those games on this channel if you guys want that, but I can't promise that I'll ever actually finish them. I definitely might make another task, it just requires that I find a game that I really, really like, like Pizza Tower. I really want to test Pizza Tower. And so finally, we have this set of questions, which is about what I plan for the future. Obviously, I'm not going to stop making challenge videos. This is what I like to do in my free time, so it's always going to be at least one of the things that I do. I'm thinking about Battle Block, I'm thinking about Fez, I'm thinking about maybe Isaac, uh, maybe even potentially more Plans for Zombies, uh, and that's just near future stuff. But outside of challenge content, I've definitely thought of branching out a tiny bit, but nothing beyond the core idea of the channel, which is just learning cool stuff about a game. Tassing isn't off the table. I've thought about doing games that are just glitch and speedrun explanations, although I've yet to be inspired enough to do that. An idea that I really like but don't think would be successful is taking a game that no one knows about and routing out a task or a speedrun for it just because I like the process of routing. And that's just main channel stuff, by the way. If I get funky ideas that I like but wouldn't fit, like commentary videos or things like that, uh, it's going up here on this second channel, so keep that in mind. And that's it for the challenge related questions. Uh, next up, we got questions on my origins, like how I got my start and inspirations and whatnot. A lot of people asked about the origins of the name Sample. It wasn't actually Sample originally. The name of the channel used to be Sam Phantom. Hey everybody, it's Sam Phantom here. Today I'm going to be playing Rotar. Let's go! This was just a classic example of a very young child trying to come up with a cool gamer name, and I came up with Sam Phantom, not realizing that I was accidentally referencing Danny Phantom. Eventually, I did get sick of people in online games rapping the Danny Phantom theme song at me, so I wanted to change it to something very normal and not explicitly trying to be cool. I eventually landed on Sample, uh, because I had it in my head for some reason that it needed to have my name in it, which is of course Amp. Sample just spoke me for whatever reason. It's probably the pun potential, I'm not gonna lie. A couple people asked if I expected to be a YouTuber when I uploaded the Kirby Tass, and the answer is an obvious no. Who would? There was definitely a point when I was younger that I made YouTube videos with the explicit purpose of, like, eventually getting popular. So I would clickbait videos like crazy, I would follow trends and things like that. It's actually kind of funny because it was around the time that I started making the Tass where I stopped having that mentality, and I said, hey, uh, I'm gonna stop treating YouTube as this, like, weird potential career aspiration because that's incredibly unrealistic, and I'm instead going to treat it as this creative outlet where I just upload videos that I want whenever I want um, just because they're things that I want to make or things that I want to watch. That was the birth of the Battletoads video. It's just something that I did over the weekend because, you know, it's just something that I found funny. Uh, that was also the birthplace of my original Smash Bros montages. They were just things that I made with my friends and because I knew how to edit because of all of my uh, stupid younger years of trying to get popular. And of course, the task is a major example of this. It's just an, a thing that I really, really really wanted to watch, and so it's something that I decided to go out and make because no one else was going to. I never in a million years would have guessed that it would become like one of the most viewed tasses just in general, which is insane. And more so, I never would have guessed that people would come back to watch my other non tas videos too, like that's also insane to me. Sort of on that note, the next few questions are related to my inspirations for both making YouTube videos and doing challenges in general, and I have several. For the original task video, I went into it knowing that I would eventually want to do a commentated version, and that's because I love Malio's commentated tasses. I seriously don't understand why more 
tassers don't talk about their work in a video. Like, contextualizing all the crazy stuff you're seeing just makes it so much more interesting to me. As for the videos that I make now, though, I take a lot of inspiration from Summoning Salt and Bismuth. Summoning Salt is just so good at storytelling and creating a journey out of, like, nothing. Uh, and he's also shameless. Like, he makes some things super cheesy and overly serious, but it really works more often than not, and that's a feeling that I try and emulate in a lot of my videos as well. Bismuth, on the other hand, makes literally perfect videos in my eyes. The editing and explanation writing is so good in all of his videos, and he's also pretty dang good at storytelling and scene setting and all that. Whenever I get writer's block, I almost always look towards a Bismuth or a Summoning Salt video uh, to get a sense of what really solid video structure looks like in the types of videos that I want to make. As for inspirations for doing challenges in general, I have two. One you've probably heard of, and one you probably haven't. The lesser known one is this guy named Cole, who played one of my favorite childhood games, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, uh, if you know, you know. He would make so many videos that were either really short glitch discovery videos where he'd show off some random cool trick he found, or speedruns that applied those cool tricks. And my maybe like 10 year old brain at the time ate it up like crazy. I loved the idea of building up this deep understanding of a game and applying it in a different context, specifically speedrunning. I never really played games normally after that, uh, because I'd get so sidetracked by trying to find speedrun skips or whatever. I remember in particular uh, getting Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon when it first came out, which is a game that I was big time looking forward to as a kid, but in like the second mansion or something, I got distracted because I found an out of bounds glitch, and I spent like the first maybe 20 hours of that game just messing around with that and trying to find an application for it. I used to beat games just because I wanted to watch a speedrunner test fit, or because I wanted to speedrun it myself, and that was like my main motivation. However, I eventually did lose my interest in speedrunning in particular. Uh, I had an era where I started to play more classic games or story games, and I actually played them for, you know, like for fun. But then I watched Pan and Coic collect Watch for Rolling Rocks in 0.5A presses and relapsed immediately. This is legitimately my favorite video on YouTube, and I enjoy it 100% unironically. Of course, I had to watch all of his other videos, and lo and behold, he has the exact same channel structure as Cole did. Uh, except instead of Spongebob and speedrunning, it's Mario 64 with no jumping. I was immediately obsessed, and finding cool tricks for video game challenges became my new thing that I did in my free time. And uh, this person, whose name that I almost certainly cannot pronounce, asked what my first challenge was, and the answer is actually Battle Block Theater Jump List. The reason is because I wanted to do a Jump List challenge because of Pan and Coic, and I looked at my Steam list, saw Battle Block at the top alphabetically, and said, yeah, sure. It's actually super cool too, I might do a video on it soon. That being said, I will literally never do a collaboration with any other YouTuber, and this guy in particular is really stupid for asking this question. Like, I don't know what he was thinking. Next up, we got games questions. Woo! Lots of people want to know what my favorite games are, a couple people want to know my least favorites, so I got a couple answers for you. Hollow Knight honestly might be the best. If I had to objectively rank every single game I've ever played, then Hollow Knight has a pretty good chance of landing at the top. Oh wait, I already did do that, and it is number one, that's cool. But objectivity aside, uh, Minecraft is easily the game that I have the fondest memories of, with Stardew Valley as a close second. Not only did I play Minecraft like all throughout my childhood, ever since it came out, whenever it came out, like 2010 or something, but I also got back into it during a special 2020 event, and and for some reason it just hit different in that moment, so it really does have a special place in my heart. However, my personal number one favorite game, uh, subjectively of course, has got to be 999, or 9 hours, 9 persons, 9 doors. This thing fits in my brain like a god dang puzzle piece. It's just like, it's one of those free online escape games, almost, with a bit of a Saw-like story, uh, but it just locked me in, and I could not stop playing as soon as I started. It's easily my best experience playing a game, and I cannot wait for the day I get Alzheimer's and I can play it fresh every day. That being said, my least favorite game is unfortunately Virtue's Last Reward, which is 999's sequel. It's not like it's the worst game I've ever played, like it's fine, it's just that it's a bad sequel, and it's a bad sequel to my favorite game, and so I hated every second playing it. It's hard to explain without spoiling both games, but trust me, I like 999 infinitely more than I like Zero Escape as a series. Hey, speaking of series, let's talk about my favorite one of those, cause it's not Kirby. One series that immediately comes to mind is Metroid. Metroid games, uh, they're so good. I like all of them, except I guess the first two. And Super Metroid, in particular, is just one of my all-time favorite games. And generally speaking, this the Metroid template is just really, really fun. It's embarrassing to say, but I guess another one of my favorite series is, I guess, Danganronpa. It's a little bit of a weird one to call one of my favorites. I, I like to tell myself that I enjoy these games ironically, but it it's honestly like, it's 50-50. Half the time, it is just so bad that it's good and I find it very funny, but the other half the time, the mysteries are actually legitimately pretty good, and there are some cool characters that I actually like. Oh yeah, also, I can recount every single event from all three games with a startling amount of detail, and I don't know why. It's been five years since I've played them, uh, I remember very little about the Ace Attorney games, which I also really Really like and are kind of similar in game structure, but Danganronpa is something about it, it's just a curse on my brain. 
A few people also ask what my favorite video game genre is, and based on my videos and maybe even my answers to the previous questions, you might think that it's either platformers or visual novels. But that's not true. Uh, I actually don't like most platformers too much, unless they have good challenge potential, and visual novels that don't incorporate mystery elements immediately make me fall asleep. I cannot handle them. Instead, my favorite genre is actually puzzle games. Now to be fair, my definition for puzzle games is pretty broad. There are a couple obvious ones like uh, Portal, um, oh, The Witness, Return of Oberdin, all some of my favorite games of all time, and they're all blatant puzzle games, like you can't argue they're not. However, I also consider most of the games that I've made videos on puzzle games, like even though Cuphead usually isn't you know, considered a puzzle game at all. If you do Cuphead without jumping, then it kind of turns into a puzzle game. And that's the stuff that I like. My least favorite genre, um, even though it's not really a genre, it's just like a game structure, I don't care. My least favorite's roguelike. I hate roguelikes with all my being. It's not to say that there isn't a single good like roguelike game out there. The Binding of Isaac is one of my favorite games. I've played it so much. Um, Dead Cells I really enjoy, Hades I really enjoy. It's just that all these games with the exception of Isaac, Isaac's a weird case, but like Hades and Dead Cells, oh my God, they'd be so much better if they weren't roguelike. They'd be so much better if there was actual real level design and maybe a real story. Like, oh my god. Anyway, that's it with the game's questions, and thus that's it with most of the frequently asked questions. From now, I'm going to answer a bunch of miscellaneous questions that only one or a couple people ask that I actually really like. If you ask something like, oh, what's your favorite color? Or what's your favorite cheese? Or uh, do it be farting? Um, I'm sorry, I'm probably just not going to be answering it in this video. Uh, we'll see about it. Edison here asks if I will ever do a challenge run on a big non-indie game or a AAA game. This is actually kind of an interesting question, just about game choice in general. Most of my videos are either what I call childhood games, which are like old classic Nintendo games. Plants for Zombies is like a childhood game to me, or they are indie games. And the reason why I chose those two specific categories of games is because those are the games that I play and those are the games that I'm interested in. So really, at the end of the day, unless a AAA game comes around that I'm really, really enthralled by and I'm really, really inspired by, um, I'm probably not going to make a video about it. And that's just how it goes. This is a bit of a nonsensical question, considering that the Battletoads video is representative of my community and all the memories that I've made on YouTube. So I really don't think I could have one without the other. I don't understand. I feel like I've been very, very vocal about my opinion on beans throughout every single one of my videos. If you have to ask this question, you just haven't been paying attention. The bulletin board in the Stardew Valley video costs about 20 bucks, but exactly zero gold. A couple of people asked if I ever get angry when making a challenge video, uh, and the answer is no. I'm not the type of person to really get angry. Uh, instead, if something goes wrong, I'm the type of person to get real sad. A few people asked questions along the lines of, uh, will I ever come back to a challenge uh, if it gets outdated and stuff like that? The thing is, a lot of my challenges at this point have been outdated or like proven or debunked differently. I don't know. Uh, the thing is, I don't really mind having an outdated challenge on my YouTube channel, and going back and updating it is a whole lot of stinking work, and I really don't think as many people would be interested in the update as they would be in my initial first attempt at it, so I'd probably not. This person asked if there was a reason for faking my Hollow Knight video, which is really funny because I didn't do that. One thing I did do in my Hollow Knight video was use the uh, quality of life mod, and I did that because I didn't want to have to down patch my game in order to make the float glitch possible. I just decided not to mention that in the video. I guess that's what this person's referring to when I say when they say cheating. I don't know. It's just kind of funny. Nah, I hate that guy. Oh, Mr. Samuelson, just need to win It's me. Okay. Um, my only hope is this. Okay, it's cool. Uh, oh yeah, it's blue. Favorite color is blue. No, it's actually blue. The issue is I'm uh, colorblind, so I probably can't see too many other shades of blue other than the normal shade of blue. So thanks for asking, Penny Jim. Kind of messed up that you say that I have that vibe, but yes, I do have a computer science background. I'm not a big cook at all. I definitely need to learn more recipes, but I would say that fried rice is my best uh, put effort into cooking dish. It's the only dish I know that doesn't involve a microwave pretty much. I wish I logged hours, uh, but editing takes forever. It takes usually a couple weeks of full-time days. So I would say like uh, around 50 to 100 hours of editing per video. I use Adobe After Effects initially for a lot of my earlier videos. I used Final Cut Pro on my Mac, but then it killed my Mac. It could not handle that much editing. So I switched to my PC. As for like tips for up and coming YouTubers, don't ask me. I'm still an up and coming YouTuber as far as I'm aware, right? Like, and I just 
got my start extremely luckily, so yeah, I, I'm not really that great to ask in that regard. But for just making videos, if you get stuck, you have writer's block or something, my biggest tip is make something that you yourself would enjoy watching. Personally, the types of challenge videos that I like the most are very, very technical ones, ones that go really, really in depth on certain aspects of the game. So that's what I try and make. However, if you get to a certain point and you're just like, okay, well, in a sample video, this would be the part where he goes into a 10 minute explanation about how this part's mathematically possible, but I always hate that part. That part's always really boring to me. Don't do that. Instead, include more like reactions of you live completing the challenge or something. Do whatever you find more entertaining because then an audience that has similar taste to you is going to find you. And that's exactly what you want. I'd say I'd max out at like five. I'm not too, too confident in my egg eating abilities. I'm not gonna lie. I cheated. Every single one of my challenges is fake. It's not real. I am a fraud. Yeah, there is a fake one. He was just here. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know and I have no way of knowing. For like a year, I've wanted to make this April Fool's video, which is just the original Super Mario Bros without jumping. And it's just like, obviously fake like I come across a pipe and it's just like now this area introduced a very interesting obstacle but with enough hard work and enough time we were able to make it through you know just like a bunch of really stupid stuff like that where it was written in the same exact style of scripting as I usually do but it's just obviously not real the reason why I don't want to do that though is because I, I can't just like keep that video on the channel because what if someone who discovers my channel when it's not April Fool's and doesn't know what my deal is that's like the first or second video of mine they watch they're like they're, they're gonna be like what in the world is this <laughs> this is not real at all so I'm not entirely sure what to do about that uh, just shade here asked a really really good question um, uh, it's it's a really oh man it's a really good one dude I'm really trying here man I think I said in my Hollow Knight video that I was only allowed to use one glitch because I hate Hollow Knight glitches because they break the entire game and it's not that interesting generally speaking though if glitches are not extraordinarily game breaking I don't, actually even if they are extraordinarily game breaking I, I find them really really interesting and I really like doing them and I really like explaining them and understanding why they work oh my goodness I have uh, I have so many hobbies outside of you know uh, work and and YouTube and stuff. I, I so much, so so many, so many things that I enjoy doing. Like, like all, all outside too. Like outdoors, it, it's pretty incredible actually. I steal my sense of humor from YouTubers that I enjoy at any given time. Currently, I think I'm a combination of Simple Flips, Northern Lion, and Drew Gooden. Uh, those guys are all really, really funny to me. Oh man! Somehow, uh, probably through my Battletoads video, if I had to guess. This person found out that I used to do Carol Blaster speedruns. I used to be the world record holder. I was the GOAT of Carol Blaster, uh, but a couple years ago, I think, uh, I got bopped and I have had a video idea in my brain of getting back that world record after like a decade. It hasn't been a decade yet is the issue. So uh, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna work with that. Also Carol Blaster in general. Um, first off, it's a game that nobody knows about. So I'm not sure if anyone would watch the video. And even if they did, I would have to get the world record for the video. And the thing about Carol Blaster, it requires mashing, number one, and it destroys my wrist whenever I mash like that. Um, you have to do it for like half an hour straight, and that's just one attempt. And two, uh, Carol Blaster has variable game speed, which is extraordinarily annoying. So I'd have to like super optimize my computer um, specifically for Carol Blaster, and I don't really even know how to do that. I don't know. I remember it being the worst thing of all time, and I hate it a lot, so I probably won't ever come back to it. I don't know. We'll see. A few people asked about Kirby content and this person in particular asked a really really good question about uh, jumping the gun on Kirby so I wouldn't get stuck with Kirby for the rest of my life. The thing is after I made the Superstar Ultra TAS I made the Superstar Ultra no jumping videos just as sort of a test to see if people would watch those videos. When they did I got a little bit scared that I would you know get trapped in the Kirby hole. I'm sure everyone who's watching this video has seen YouTubers get trapped in the hole. Just get trapped only with one type of content and then they, when they try and switch and do something else they, you know, don't get any views and I really wanted to avoid that. The way that I did it is I meticulously crafted <laughs> uh, a video upload schedule that would ensure that I could escape. The solution was my Hollow Knight video. The Hollow Knight video I put so much effort into, like I said earlier in this very Q&A video, Hollow Knight was one of the challenges that I did before I even made challenge videos, so I knew it was going to be a good one, and I knew exactly how to craft the video in such a way that was very, very interesting, and I deliberately uploaded the Hollow Knight video right before Kirby and the Forgotten Land's release. And then, of course, I made Kirby and the Forgotten Land Jumpless in like five days, which I was really hoping would get a lot of views because I had the Kirby audience and then I also have, you know, the new audience of new Kirby viewers or whatever. And that worked insanely well, all according to plan. <laughs> I got a ton of views on the Kirby in the Forgotten Land video and a bunch of trickle down onto my Hollow Knight video. And a lot of people realized, oh my gosh, his Hollow Knight video is actually really, really freaking good.
good. And then after that, I uploaded some more indie game related content. And with that, I was able to sort of escape. And then I was able to build a big enough audience to where I'm, now I'm able to make sort of a video about any game that I want and my audience knows, okay, he's probably gonna do some variety stuff. So that's exactly the situation I wanted. That's This is the exact situation I want to be in, making variety videos about really whatever I want. Obviously it's not that much variety, it's still challenge content, but it's any game that I want. It's not just Kirby, which is great because I don't really wanna make Kirby videos for the rest of my life. This person thinks that my Spanish pronunciation is very good. Everyone point and laugh. A couple people want to know if I'm ever going to do YouTube full-time. Um, the answer is probably not. <laughs> I'm currently pursuing a degree. I'm currently job hunting for, you know, a real job. The thing with YouTube is that it's so insecure right now, especially at my channel size. So, uh, I don't know. It's, it's unreliable. I doubt I'll ever stop making YouTube videos, at very least anytime soon. But whether or not I'm actually going to go full-time and put all my full effort into making YouTube videos, chances are pretty slim. I guess they're not zero, but, you know, we'll see. No, I'm not. No. No, what? No. Oh, man. Okay. Um, probably a cat person more than a dog person. I would give it like a 9 out of 10, maybe a 9.5. Hollow Knight's pretty good. Uh, I might do a Zelda video. We'll see. It depends on if, whether or not I come up with a good idea. Um, Pantheon's Your Steel Cell maybe uh, is the thing. Hollow Knight is a hard game. I, I don't know if I'll ever come back to it. Um, generally, I cheat in all my challenges. That's how I'm good at video games. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll remember you. Dragons 1348 is pretty easy. I will not do a Geometry Dash video because that game has one button and literally no variants. Uh, thank you. Um, probably not. I've never played Shantae. Uh, my most fun challenge is like I've said, uh, Shovel Knight's easy number one. I, I was nowhere in particular. Um, yeah, I, my name is Sam. Uh, I don't know. Look, man, it's out of my control. I don't know. So the wrong warp explanation is like the entire reason that I even decided to make the Super Meat Boy video. I just thought of the idea of personifying all the moving parts in that trick, and I thought it was really, really funny. And eventually I came up with the idea to use stick puppets because I don't know how to animate normally. So uh, the stick puppets is much, much easier. I could just buy like a green poster board, print out pictures of little bumbos that I edited in Photoshop, and then, you know, move them around on popsicle sticks. And it makes it actually quite interesting. It ended up looking a lot better than I ever could have imagined it would. So it's easily one of my favorite parts I've ever added in any of my videos. I'm probably not going to do a face reveal, uh, at least not anytime soon. I don't really know why. For some reason, it's just in my brain that I really don't don't want to. Um, that's why I wore a mask and hat in the Plants vs. Zombies blindfolded videos. I don't know, I like appearing physically in my videos. I just, for some reason, the face in particular is something that I want to keep kind of private. A few people asked about streaming. Uh, I have streamed a couple times in my, in my career. The thing is, I'm just not a big streaming guy, especially with the challenges that I generally do. They're kind of puzzle-based challenges. I would much rather solve the puzzle myself, you know? I feel like if I streamed a lot of those types of challenges, people would um, give me their suggestions, and that's not innately a bad thing. It's just, I want to figure it out on my own, you know? Uh, that's something that I uh, find enjoyment in. If I ever come across a challenge that's way, way too grindy, um, then maybe I'll stream it uh, just so I can have, you know, people to talk to. But I don't think I'm ever going to be a, a big time streaming person. I'm just, just not in my personality, I don't think. This is actually kind of a funny one. I just don't swear, just in general. I never really had that, like, middle school phase or whatever, where you learn what a swear word is, and then you just do it all the time in order to look cool. Instead, I had, like, the opposite phase, uh, where I just was was really really annoyed with all the people who did that because I thought I was cooler and more mature than them. Because of that I never really got comfortable swearing um, and at some point I actually found it quite funny sort of the irony and half swears uh, which only reinforced <laughs> my no swearing habit uh, all up until now and now it's like I make YouTube videos and I you know I might stream sometimes and it's like okay not swearing is actually financially beneficial for me so I'm just probably never gonna get into the habit of it which is kind of funny. Good question alert repeat we have a good question. So this person if you're listening to this as a podcast asked why I've never submitted my tasses to tasvideos.org and uh, this is intentional. So initially I actually did want to upload my Task to testvideos.org, my very first one, Superstar Ultra, and that's just because it's it's like a thing you do. It's like uploading a speedrun to speedrun.com. Like that's it, it's the standard. It's what you're supposed to do. However, uploading a speedrun to speedrun.com, it's so unbelievably easy. Uploading a task to taskvideos.org, for some reason you have to put so much more effort into the submission, and there are also a bunch of really really weird submission rules. And as I was sort of like putting together my submission, I realized that I actually disagree with a lot of the rules that they have, and I started getting scared. Like, uh oh, what if they like reject my run? 
fun because I, I started looking into some of the rejected runs and some of them are rejected for really, really, in my opinion, stupid reasons. Like one of the rules in taskvideos.org is you have to choose a really interesting game and choose a really interesting category. And it's like, what in the world? Why, <laughs> why is that required? Why can't you make a task of whatever game you want? If you do whatever you want to do, why can't that be automatically accepted? Why does a judge have to come in and be like, actually, no, this game is a little too boring to be tasked. One of the rules that I kind of agree with is their optimization rule. It's a little weird and subjective, but basically they say, hey, your task has to be like at least a little bit optimized. It has to actually look like a task in order to be accepted. It has to like beat the RTA world record or whatever. And like, that makes sense to me. One thing that doesn't though is their improvement rule where it's like, if you improve a task, you have to improve it by a certain amount in order for it to be accepted. And that makes no sense to me. These are like speed runs that we're talking about. And I don't understand, like this means there are tasks out there. There are tasks on taskvideos.org that have been improved upon, but just for some reason, the tasks that are better than the current one have not been accepted because like, oh no, because you used too many inputs from the original author. Whatever, just say that then. Just credit the original author then. I don't understand. That is unfathomable to me. But the smoking gun in this regard, and I know this isn't like the most unfathomable rule or whatever, but it definitely <laughs> like broke my heart a little bit. It removed some of my childlike innocence that I had in regard with tassing. But one of my favorite parts of tasks and one of everyone's favorite parts of tasks is the auto scrollers because it's like, oh my gosh, uh, when a tasser, you know, comes across an auto scroller in a game, they just like to mess around. And that was, you know, my motivation in my Superstar Ultra TAS. Every time I came across an auto scroller, it's like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, impose a little bit of a challenge for myself or I'm gonna do show off some really cool tech. And I thought that's just something that like, was a community accepted thing. Like, oh yeah, Tasker's just like doing this. It's just something they enjoy doing. No, it's because taskvideos.org has an entertainment rule that explicitly states that you need to be entertaining during auto scrollers like that, where you can't actually speed up. And that's insane to me. Like why, that should not be a rule. The reason why you don't see Tasses where they don't do that isn't just because, oh, because Tasser's like having some fun. No, it's because it's enforced. It's a rule that you have to have. And it, I don't know. It's just everything about taskvideos.org. It seems so gatekeepy to me and very, very weird. And I, I just don't want to be a part of that community. I don't mean to, st this isn't gonna start drama. No one's watching this video to begin with and no one's even in the task community. But I just think that it's so weird that it's so uh, restrictive almost. And it makes me not want to submit any of my videos to taskvideos.org because I, I don't know. It just feels really, really weird. Oh man, back to the interesting questions. I love tax evasion. I seriously can't imagine getting like a team or even just like one partner to work on videos, at least not on the main channel, um, because I, I want to have full control over, you know, the my videos because they're, you know, they're my pride, they're my projects. It's stuff that I want to be proud of. I don't know why I said my pride, but you guys get what I mean. A manager, like for handling sponsors and stuff, that's fine by me. Maybe an editor for a second channel, if I care about that enough, uh, maybe that'll happen at some point but for the main channel, it's always going to be me, I think. Yeah, I still go to tournaments. I'm not serious about it at all, and at this point, I only ever play Super Smash Bros. Ultimate in tournament, but no, yeah, it is very fun to go to tournaments. I really enjoy it. Yeah, it's AI. Oh man, this is a hard one. All right, that's it. Uh, welcome to the end of the video. I have a bunch of questions that I just decided not to answer. If it was one of your questions, I'm sorry. Uh, you're just not important enough, and I don't care about you at all. That's obviously a lie. I care about every single one of you. I might do another one of these if you guys are interested enough in some of the more miscellaneous questions. Maybe Maybe you guys really do need to know whether or not Mozart would win in the twerk off against Beethoven, but for now I think you guys can go on without having that information. Subscribe to this channel by the way if you're curious as to what I'm up to during the three month gaps in between all my videos. Uh, and yeah, that's it, see you.